good morning students today we are going to learn about the lesson respiration the energy releasing system so this is your second lesson in the biology so we will go uh, what are the important topics covered in this lesson so first we will see about the introduction part so the respiration actually in the first lesson nutrition you learn about how the food molecules are digested and how the digested food molecules are transported to your all body cells but in this lesson we learn how the different food molecules are converted to energy here the respiration means the process the process for breakdown of food molecules to release energy is known as respiration so what are the food molecules getting after digestion are breaking down in the presence of oxygen to release energy in the cells that process is known as respiration so first of all the term respiration derived from a latin word known as respire respire means to breathe so what we thought means respiration means simply just breathing inhalation and exhalation of gases but that is not the correct concept so the breathing is one of the part in the respiration respiration actually linked up with the energy releasing from the food molecules in the cells so two scientists already know about it priestley and lavoisier were the two scientists who did a comprehensive work on the uh, dis uh, discovery of gases and exchange of gases and how the respiration goes on they carried a different experiments to know these all topics so in that lavoisier on heating powdered car uh, charcoal a gas nothing but co2 was released and at that time the co2 was known as a was called as the fixed air and at that time o2 is uh, it is also called it vitiated air means the expenditure air so the next one pathway of air before going to pathway of air first we see the respiratory system in the humans so first of all students all of you look at this this is your human respiratory system so your respiratory system first no starts with the nostrils and the space inside the nose we called as nasal cavity after that a larynx that larynx is also known as voice box why it is called as voice box i'll tell and trachea trachea is also known as windpipe so nostrils nasal cavity larynx trachea alve uh, next lungs again what are the different parts of lungs i'll say that here i forgot to write a small thing that is pharynx so nostrils nasal cavity pharynx larynx trachea bronchi bronchioles and these all small chambers are nothing but alveoli this is about your respiratory system so here i written how the air once you inhale how the air will go through the different parts of respiratory system first simply we inhale the air with the nostrils so after that the air entered into the nasal cavity so once you carefully observe that the inner lining of your nasal cavity is lined with the small hair and mucous membrane these small hairs help to trap the dust particles what you are uh, dust particles what are present inside the air you inhale and the mucous lining and the mucous membrane is very helpful to bring the temperature of air what we inhale to the equal to the body's temperature even though the outer air atmospheric air maybe it is hot in nature once you inhale before it going into the lungs it is brought into our body temperature with the help of the mucus secreted by the mucus membrane in the nasal cavity and the dust is here the dust particles are filtered by the hair and mucus membrane in the nasal cavity and the third one pharynx we already discussed about this in nutrition lesson also here pharynx is the common passage for both food and air so once what the air you inhale and what the food you are taken both pass through the pharynx and at the pharynx only from the pharynx only they both take separate routes means the air entered into the larynx and trachea and the food is entered into food pipe so that's why we said that pharynx is a common passage the next one coming to larynx so here in the pharynx the epiglottis is one of the important structure help to epiglottis control the movement of food and air into res their respective passages epiglottis is a flap like structure once we are eating the food it just closes the windpipe or windpipe and larynx so that the uh, the food does not enter into the larynx and windpipe 
So, other at normal time the epiglottis is open that is why what is the air we are taking simply entered into larynx and trachea. Okay, na? Then next coming to larynx. So, the larynx is made up of number of vocal cords. So, vocal cords are nothing but muscles which are helpful to uh, produce different sounds while speaking or while uh, singing. So, what are the different sounds produced by us? Be able to produce only with the help of the vocal cord muscles in the larynx. That's why we specially call larynx as either voice box or sound box. The next coming to after that larynx, uh, if you just uh, touch your neck, you feel that a uh, small uh, tube-like structure that we call as trachea windpipe. This trachea windpipe, it just uh, run along with your neck and this trachea windpipe made up of small C-shaped cartilaginous rings. Cartilage, cartilage means you already know that it is the soft bone. The trachea is whole of its length is made up of C-shaped cartilaginous rings. These rings help to protect the wind when there is air. These rings protect help to protect the wind pipe from the collapsing. The next one coming to bronchus and once the trachea when it enter into the lungs it is divided into two separate structures we called as bronchus. Each one we called as bronchus and plural both together we called as bronchi. and here these two bronchi will lead into the two different lungs. We have a pair of lungs now. So, these two bronchi will enter into the two lungs. And once they enter into the lungs, each bronchi again separated into further divisions or smallest branches we called as bronchioles. What we call bronchioles. So, after that, the bronchioles finally enter into the lungs. So, coming to when we talk about the lungs, lungs are very spongy and elastic in nature. Lungs are spongy and elastic in nature. Just how you uh, just how you feel when you touch a sponge, in the same way the lungs are very soft, spongy and they are able to elast in their nature. And the lungs are actually protected by two layered membrane we called as pleura. So, how the cardiac membrane protects the heart? from the injuries and shocks in the same way the pleura and the liquid present in the pleura membrane help to protect the lungs from the injuries and uh, next one the each lung if you just carefully observe that means compared to the uh, both the lungs in your body are not similar in size actually why because if you compare with the right lung the left lung is little bit smaller and little bit smaller why because means it just provides space for your heart so your heart where it is situated at what side means obviously the heart is located at left side of your body that's why to provide space for the heart that left lung is slightly smaller and after that each lung is divided into smallest chambers and smallest clusters we call as alveoli so, if you observe that each lung a million number of air sacs are present, that air sacs are actually we called as alveoli and singular we called as alveolus. Very, very important. Why? Because what the air we are inhaling from the nostril, it just passes through these all roots and finally entered into lungs. But actually what is the purpose where we are taking the air means just for exchange of oxygen into your body and to expel the carbon dioxide. So, here that actual exchange takes place in the smallest air sacs known as alveoli or alveol alveolus singular. So, after that from that alveolus finally the oxygen what we inhale entered into the blood uh, to the blood capillaries. Now, we are see actually what happened during respiration. So, I already told to you uh, what is the mechanism of respiration. So, mainly the respiration involving two process the first one we called as inhalation or inspiration means just taking in air and the second one we called as exhalation or expiration means simply expel out or throwing out the air. So, first one during inhalation actually before going to learn about these two process first we have to get the idea about how the chest cavity is made up of. So, the space below the neck and up to uh, abdomen we called as chest cavity we, even we also call it as thoracic cavity and inside the thoracic cavity actually our lungs are located and the chest wall is made up of different muscles and the bones we also known as ribs 
the trip case different muscles these all are ma made together the chest wall and if we just imagine your chest cavity as a room the floor of the chest cavity we called as the a special muscle known as diaphragm what we call means diaphragm so diaphragm is the mus uh, muscular layer which is present at the floor of the chest cavity and the diaphragm plays a very major role in the process of respiration so at the normal time the diaphragm is in dome shape and means at the relaxed state the diaphragm is in dome shape and the swollen part is situated inside the chest cavity so during the inhalation process means inhalation means simply we are taking in the air during the inhalation process the chest wall is moves upside and expands so because of at the same time for example this is your chest cavity at normal time the diaphragm the muscular sheet is in dome shape because of that because of that the volume of the chest cavity uh, sorry uh, because of that uh, at normal time the diaphragm is in dome shape but during contraction the diaphragm become flattens that's why what happen means the volume of the chest cavity increases so carefully remember that at normal time diaphragm is in dome shape means during relaxation state but at whenever it contracts the dome shape diaphragm become flattened so it lead to the increase in the space of the chest cavity it increase in the volume of the chest cavity whenever the volume of chest cavity increases the pressure inside the lungs will decrease because of that air from the outside rushes into the lungs so it help to take the air but the reverse happen during the exhalation process during the exhalation process from the flat and shape the diaphragm again become to its dome shape so at the same time chest wall also moves inward and down so these all changes lead to decrease in the space of the chest cavity so because of that the pressure inside the lungs become more and air from inside the lungs will be thrown out or will be pushed to the outside so these two changes happens during exhalation process chest walls move downward and diaphragm relaxes means it become its original dome shape <coughs> volume of the chest cavity decreases so you carefully remember these changes what happens during inhalation and exhalation and here ribs means you know that a set of muscles which are placed in chest cavity here coming to women during respiration mechanism ribs plays an important role many times he asked that bit during uh, respiration coming to women's ribs plays major role but coming to men coming to men diaphragm plays a major role during respiration ribs plays major role in women and diaphragm plays major role in men and i already told to you the pleura uh, the membrane surrounds the lungs and here actually gas exchange gas exchange takes place between blood capillaries and the alveoli so the lungs are made up of milli, uh, number of the uh, air sacs we called as alveoli so the air from the trachea bronchi bronchi and bronchioles finally enter into the alveoli so the this is for example this is one alveoli this alveoli is surrounded by the tiny blood capillaries or tiny blood vessels known as blood capillaries so from the air the oxygen what we inhale will be entered into the blood capillaries at the same why because means our cells already utilizes more oxygen so the blood is deficient of oxygen then compared to the air present in the alveoli because of that by the diffusion process oxygen will be entered into the blood capillaries at the same time what the blood brought by the capillaries from collected by different cells the co2 will be entered into the alveoli from blood capillaries means from from alveoli oxygen will be diffused into the blood capillaries and from the blood capillaries co2 will be diffused into alveoli and again it passes the reverse route co2 from alveolus bronchioles bronchi uh, trachea and finally through nostril it is expelled out then here uh, one pigment already we discussed this pigment even in uh, previous lesson also here the pigment why because our blood is red in color means you know that that is hemoglobin a red color pigment present in the red blood cells in uh, its structure resembles with the chlorophyll molecule but the hemoglobin contain iron as the center atom and chlorophyll contain magnesium as the central atom so 
once the uh, the oxygen will be entered into the blood capillaries once the oxygen will entered from alveoli to the blood in the blood capillaries immediately the hemoglobin of the blood molecules blood cells will be combined with the oxygen to form a special compound known as oxyhemoglobin so the oxygen simply combine with the hemoglobin to form a molecule known as oxyhemoglobin this this oxyhemoglobin transported via the blood and finally it reaches to the cells again the reverse equation will happen at the cell stage oxyhemoglobin again uh, it uh, separates into hemoglobin and oxygen hemoglobin will remain in the blood that the oxygen will be entered into the uh, each cells for the process of cellular respiration but Uh, most of the thought that the oxygen uh, the hemoglobin is a molecule which combines only with the oxygen but that is not correct actually hemoglobin show more affinity towards oxygen means it uh, mostly it have more chance to combine with oxygen but at the same time even it combines with the carbon dioxide also hemoglobin uh, most of the times he ask in the bits hemoglobin transport only oxygen carbon dioxide both your answer is both why because hemoglobin help to transport oxygen and co2 uh, o2 and co2 oxygen and carbon dioxide but it have a uh, more attraction or more affinity towards oxygen that way most amount of oxygen is transported coming to co2 in that co2 most amount of transported in the form of bicarbonates and some amount uh, with the com uh, combined with the hemoglobin or hb and remaining a little bit amount of co2 is dissolved in the blood plasma also so now we see what are the different percentage of gases in the inhaled air and exhaled air inhaled air means what the air we are taking exhaled air means what the air we are leaving coming to oxygen in that uh, inhaled air percentage is nothing but what are the different gases percentages in atmospheric oxygen in the inhaled air it is 21% but our cells uses most of the oxygen so in the exhaled air the percentage of oxygen is 16% coming to co2 in the inhaled air it is 0.04% but our cells continuously by the cellular respiration they release and at the same time co2 was also produced that's why here the concentration of co2 rises in the exhaled air coming to nitrogen it is not uh, utilized by cells actually that's why it remain constant even in the in inhaled air and exhaled air then our lungs actually hmm, we are using very little amount of our lung capacity so if you observe the lung capacity nearly 5 th it, the total lung capacity means how much uh, amount of air filled with the lung uh, filled by lungs means it is 5800 ml but at rest at normal time just we inhale or we exhale nearly approximately 500 ml of air but after complete exhalation still how much air remains in lungs means it is 1200 ml it is just 1200 ml and uh, if you go for heights for example if you just uh, climb at the hill re hill region obviously after some time you feel uh, very thirsty and you just suffocates here what's the reason behind it means from compared to the sea level if you go for height the concentration of oxygen will be decreases so from uh, sea level if we go for 13 kilometers height the oxygen level is 1 by 5th means Uh, one by fifth level only oxygen is present at the 13 kilometers high if you just go remain still height means still the oxygen concentration will be decreases that is the only reason when we are going to hilly re hill regions or any height regions we just suffocates and we are uh, suffered with breathing problem means the oxygen concentration is not up to the mark what the actual uh, cells utilize and here the very important process some listen it is cellular respiration so respiration means actually it include five stages in the respiration first stage that is nothing but breathing simply we inhaling oxygen and exhaling carbon dioxide and after that gas is transport between the alveoli and blood capillaries so after that the oxygen from the blood capillaries will be transported to the cells and again one more exchange is also takes place that is between the 
blood uh, trans, uh, exchange of gases between the blood capillaries and our body cells last stage of respiration is nothing but cellular respiration the most important process cellular respiration process means simply the respiration uh, uh, cellular respiration how we define the cellular respiration means the breaking down of food molecules to release energy at the cellular level that's why we call it as cellular respiration and here if we want to get energy from food molecule definitely the food molecule should be combusted or should be uh, combined with the oxygen and in that process only energy is released that but that is occurred at each and every cell of the all animals and humans so that process we called as cellular respiration and here the cellular respiration means i already told to you uh, breaking down of food molecules to release energy cellular respiration in the prokaryotes means uh, like bacteria or lower organisms in the prokaryotes the cellular respiration takes place cytoplasm of the cell why because uh, the prokaryotes does not have any well organized cell organelles like mitochondria chloroplast these all but coming to eukaryotes eukaryotes in the cell they specifically have all type of cell organelles which are bounded by a membranes in the eukaryotes the cellular respiration it takes place half part in the cytoplasm and the remaining most of the portion is occurred at the cell organelle known as in ninth class you already studied na uh, mitochondria <laughs> mitochondria see how here mitochondria is the place where cellular respiration but coming to prokaryotes it occurs only in the cytoplasm so what is the energy released by cells in the cellular respiration that is stored in a special chemical molecule known as atp means adenosine triphosphate so each atp molecule further gives nearly 7200 calories of energy and here small flow chart so at normal time for for example if the respiration want to pro, if the respiration want to take in place it must need oxygen but most of uh, most of the organisms use oxygen for the respiration process but even some organisms like bacteria and yeast cells they produce energy even without oxygen also so now we go through that actually i already told you in know, a glucose here in any organism glucose is the first molecule glucose is the molecule which is uh, going in the oxidation or respiration process in the first stage of respiration glucose actually oxidized in two stages in the first stage glucose converted into a three carbon compound molecule known as pyruvate or pyruvic acid so this particular step we term it as glycolysis what we term glycolysis glycolysis means lysis means breakdown glyco means glucose in the first stage glucose breakdown into a three uh, carbon compound known as pyruvate for example if there is sufficient amount of oxygen that pyruvate molecule break down into co2 water and large amount of energy is released very very important if the glucose is oxidized in the presence of oxygen energy is released even in the absence of oxygen also energy released but what might be the difference means if it is oxidized in the presence of oxygen means very large amount of energy released but in the absence of oxygen means very little bit amount of energy released everywhere energy was released but the amount only makes the difference so here in the presence of oxygen the respiration takes place that we call as aerobic respiration aerobic respiration so in the aerobic respiration the final products are co2 water and a large amount of energy it takes place in all higher animals including humans but very when there is either low oxygen or no oxygen when there is low oxygen or no oxygen means there is very less amount of oxygen or there is completely no oxygen organism produce different different compounds in the respiration process for example if you take the bacteria in the bacteria during uh, if the respiration takes place in the absence of oxygen that we called as anaerobic respiration respiration actually two types if in the it takes place in the presence of oxygen it is aerobic respiration if it takes place in the absence of oxygen it we called as anaerobic respiration the anaerobic respiration occurs in all lower organisms like bacteria and yeast but the products are different if it occurs in bacteria it release both lactic acid and energy and if it occurs in the yeast cells it produce ethanol carbon dioxide and energy even chemically we call this particular step is also as fermentation 
సో మేబీ యూ ఆల్రెడీ హర్డ్ అబౌట్ ఇన్ ఈ బేకింగ్ ఇండస్ట్రీస్ ఈవెన్ ఇన్ ఆల్కహాల్ ఇండస్ట్రీస్ ఈస్ట్ ఈస్ట్ వాజ్ యూజ్డ్ ఈస్ట్ సెల్స్ కన్వర్ట్ ద గ్లూకోజ్ ఇన్ టు ఎతనాల్ ప్లస్ సీవో టూ ప్లస్ ఎనర్జీ దిస్ ప్రాసెస్ కన్వర్షన్ ఆఫ్ షుగర్ ఆర్ గ్లూకోజ్ ఇన్ టు ఆల్కహాల్ ఇన్ ద యాబ్సెన్స్ ఆఫ్ ఆక్సిజన్ వీ కాల్డ్ యాజ్ ఎనర్ ఫెర్మెంటేషన్ ఫెర్మెంటేషన్ ఈజ్ ఆల్సో వన్ టైప్ ఆఫ్ అనారోబిక్ రెస్పిరేషన్ ఫెర్మెంటేషన్ ప్లేస్ వెరీ ఇంపార్టెంట్ రోల్ ఇన్ bakeries and beverage industries means production of alcohols so because of that co2 released by yeast cells only making to raise in duff means the um, baking industry even ethanol is nothing but ethyl alcohol uh, which is nothing but one type of alcohol and then even our body for example even a uh, athletes athletes are sport persons uh, they are taking vigorous exercises so even at normal state our body cells uses oxygen only for the production of energy but during vigorous exercise or during uh, running for long time what is the oxygen we are supply to our body cells is not sufficient to produce that much energy so obviously our body cells at the particular period they shifted to another type of respiration we called as anaerobic respiration so especially muscle cells in our body during vigorous exercise they produce a chemical compound known as lactic acid so most of time after vigorous exercise or after running obviously you feel your Uh, muscle pains are uh, just you thought that uh, we i am very uh, what tired and uh, i already suffered with pains so why the, we feel that muscular pains means at that time because of less oxygen supply to our body lactic acid compound is accumulated in our muscles it lead to the muscular pain but at that time if you just rest for some time uh, when again there is uh, oxygen is sufficient that lactic acid will be dissolves again and just we get relief that's only the reason and here to prove the anaerobic respiration in yeast cells uh, in your textbook one important activity is given uh, it is very very important either in competitive wise or even your uh, ssc examination in the test experiment first we heat the um, glucose sugar uh, glucose solution and after that we immediately cooled it why we are doing like that means to remove the oxygen present in the glucose solution after that we add some amount of yeast and so that oxygen was removed from that cells why because we are removing oxygen means here we want to do the test in the anaerobic conditions that's why we remove oxygen in that we use a special dye means one color giving agent we are using that name was diazin green or janus green b in the yeast experiment we use the dye diazin green or janus green b if there is no oxygen very short oxygen short amount of oxygen is present that diazin green b dye turns it color from blue to the pink so based on that we confirm that there is a short supply of oxygen then Uh, based on their body size and based on the availability of water and the circulate type of the circulatory system what they have different organisms develop the different respiratory system for example a unicellular organism like amoeba even multicellular organisms like hydra and planaria they simply diffuse the gases from uh, diffuse the gases by using their body surface it is uh, the these all are very important actually unicellular amoeba and multicellular hydra and planaria they don't have special respiratory organs the gases diffuses into their body by the body surface then coming to fish it is aquatic animal na it is completely lives in water that's why it use gills as their respiratory organs the respiration which occurs by using gills we called as bronchial respiration what we call bronchial respiration so uh is a fish having gills and gill lamella this completely bathed in the water and the exchange of gases takes place between the gills and their blood capillaries that respiration we call as bronchial respiration and coming to insects either cockroach grasshopper and most of the insect uh, the re- type of respiration we call as tracheal respiration what we call tracheal respiration these insects throughout their body contain a series of tubes we called as actually trachea uh, at the sides of their body they are having small pores or holes these holes or pores we called as spiracles through that spiracles how the air into our body entered through the nostrils in the insects air from outside entered through the spiracles and entered into a tubes known as trachea that type of respiration we called as tracheal respiration and 
the animals like frog earthworm leech these all uh, in that the gas exchange takes place through skin such type of respiration we called as cutaneous respiration but remaining all reptiles all birds mammals including humans we have well developed respiratory organs known as lungs so the respiration we called as pulmonary respiration so if the respiration occurs through the gills we called as bronchial respiration it occurs through trachea it is known as tracheal respiration takes place in all insects if sometimes they, he asked in the bit what are the respiratory organs in cockroach means trachea what are the what is the type of respiration in uh, grasshopper means tracheal respiration uh, organ is the trachea uh, what the organ we termed as trachea and the type of respiration we called as tracheal respiration and here if the organ here the respiratory organ is skin we called that as cutaneous respiration cutaneous respiration occurs in earthworm leech even frog also here a frog is a special case it utilizes both skin and lungs for its respiration purpose means in the frog both and it means it is amphibian and it able to live in the water at the same time it live on the land so based on the condition where it live it uses its respiratory organs so in the frog here the frog you just remember very important in the frog both cutaneous and pulmonary respiration also takes place and uh, so if the respiration occurs through lungs what we call that respiration as pulmonary respiration so these are the different respiratory organs in the animals coming to plants so plants does not uh, uh, have special respiratory organs you already mm, aware of that the stomata stomata are the through the stomata mostly the gas exchange takes place in the plants coming to plants the stomata means the small pores present in the leaves through the stomata gas exchange takes place but along with stomata a lenticens a loose connective tissue present on the stem and even surface of roots also plays a role in the uh, gas exchange or respiration plus, uh, process in the plants but generally uh, through the roots the plant take the air which is present between the soil particles but if the plants are live in the marshy lands or wet areas the spaces between the soil are filled with the water instead of air so that areas we marshy lands we called actually so the plants which are growing in that uh, we called as mangrove plants so to avoid the uh, respiration uh, to avoid the uh, amount of uh, to avoid the loss of air these mangrove plants develop a special roots called as aerial roots means actually remaining all plants roots are situated below the ground but these aerial roots projected out of the soil and they simply take the atmospheric air so mangrove plants contain a special roots known as aerial roots and most of the plants using stomata lenticels and surface of roots thank you children